one win away from a shot at a national championship. The shoe in Columbus, Ohio is rocking today. A record crowd. But the next stop for the Buckeyes will be the toughest of all. Their arch rivals from Michigan. It's Michigan against Ohio State. That's all you have to say about this classic matchup. Welcome, everybody. With Gary Danielson, I'm Brent Musburger. There's no feeling like being down on the field for this guy with the bands and the players and everything. You no, know, right, Brent. All week it's been hype. You know, how do you win this game? All the experts have said everything. Tackling, hold on to the football, catch the football, defense, offensive line. You know, they're all right. But being down here with these guys, I got a feeling it's going to be a wild card today. I think Maurice Claret is going to have to play to beat Michigan. And the fellas in behind us are all members of championships past here at Ohio State. The last time they have won one is 1968. Can they do it again? They'll have to get through Michigan. The kickoff is coming up next. Head coach return. of the Buckeyes, kickoff Jim Tressel. Return. I got to ask you about Maurice Claret. You've decided to start or not start the freshman. You know, he probably won't start, but he's going to play significant. How important is his play today to winning this game? Well, everyone's play is going to be crucial. Everyone will be ready to go. Coach, good luck. Thank you. Jack, that was a, a wonderful moment. We caught Jimmy. He has been looking at the coin flip. Uh, I did not see it, but obviously Michigan won and deferred, <laughs> and he was yelling for the return unit. You, you got such a great insight into the hands-on control that Trussell has over this Ohio State football team. Believe me, he is the one who calls the plays. He looks at his offensive chart. He lets the defensive coaches take care of that. But Jim Trussell has been hands-on. Now, over the last 50 years, ladies and gentlemen, and Gary Daniels has said, Brent, this is the most amazing stat. Look at this. 24 24 and 2. That began with the second year of the Woody Hayes regime. And of course, in the 90s, the Wolverines dominated the Buckeyes. Lloyd Carr, an assistant coach under Gary Moeller, then he became the head coach, but still the dominance continued. Three times, three times in the 90s, they upset undefeated Buckeye teams. And so, now the Wolverines will kick it off with Philip Brabs, 22 touchbacks on 35 kickoffs. There is a little bit of a breeze. We'll see how that helps him here. He'll send it on the ground, fielded at the seven yard line by Maurice Hall. Hall, who will be the starting running back today, ridden out of bounds at the 26 yard line. So the junior quarterback Craig Krenzel and folks note he is from Utica Michigan he is the only Buckeye from the state of Michigan and here he is the starting quarterback here today so the Nivea for men starting lineup Maurice Hall steps into that lineup as the starting tailback Claret will come off the bench note please not a single senior amongst the skill players Chris Gamble will go both ways number seven they open up with a slot formation. Now Prinzel changes it up against a four-man defensive front. And the Wolverines change their coverage. It'll be Hall, nothing doing as the Wolverines jump him quickly. Our offensive line, and again, not a single senior. Stepanovich moved from center over to right guard when Bishop went out with an injury through a key block against Illinois. Two seniors in the Michigan defensive line, Ramashek and Lazarus. The linebackers, one senior, but he's a good one. Number six, Victor Hobson. And Cato June and Charles Drake also are seniors as the Bucks now come up with second down. Frenzel back in the shotgun. Four-man defensive front again for the Wolverines. On that inside handoff, and it does not fool Michigan. Scott McClintock drawing a start, steps in and makes the stop. 
Now there you see the BCS standings Miami beating Pittsburgh on a Thursday night you can see how close the Buckeyes are but all they have to do win this game today they will be headed for the Tostitas Fiesta Bowl. That's all? <laughs> um, first two plays, Brent. Maurice Hall misread both blocks. I think he should have took it upfield. He could have had positive yardage. He misread both of them and did not follow the blocking pattern at all. And that's why Ross has checked in here. Third down. And it's three and out on the opening series for the Buckeyes. Very typical of Greg Krenzel. When Craig does not see an open receiver early in a football game, he just tosses it away. They have the best special team combination in college football. Ohio State will punt the football. Michigan gets a big assist here. Julius Curry off the injured list will return this punt. And he's facing an Andy Groom, one of the best in the country. Groom drives it. Curry at the 29 yard line. Dances to the 40. And the Scarlet and Gray put him down right there. Stop by 35. So it is John Navarre. He has something to prove after a year ago. And he has 16 career 200 plus yard passing games on Nivea for men. Starting lineup, three seniors for the Wolverines. Their last game against the Buckeyes. Askew, Jopru, and Bellamy. Benny Jopru, number 83, is a very talented tight end. The Wolverines will hope to keep Chris Perry running the way he did a week ago against Wisconsin. Jopru gets down with a strong formation to the right. Motion. Edwards, and here comes Perry on the first carry to the middle, bounces off the first tackle, keeps going almost to midfield. Find a second effort. Behind this offensive line, only one senior. The rest of them will all be back. Tony Papu switched over to left tackle has made a difference. Kenny Peterson, the lone senior in that defensive front. Darian Scott will try it today. Two seniors and linebacker for Ohio State. And of course, both safeties, Nicky and Doss. This their last game against Michigan. Wolverine stay with the power game and carry for the first down. We already saw the difference already in this football game early. Michigan's running backs going downhill and breaking tackles to start the game out. We talked to Lloyd Carr. He said that he thought the Ohio State defense was one of the best tackling defenses he's ever seen at Ohio State. So John Navarro will attempt to move it with a one back as Askew. And the Wolverines now show four wide. They could be putting it up here for midfield, and they are. Short drop, Navarro incomplete. John Navarre spoke about the keys to moving the ball on the Buckeyes. Third and long, I think. Uh, they were doing a lot of other things, but they were executing and stuff like that. But uh, I think we're, we're keeping ourselves on the short field. Uh, we're gaining you know, yardage on first, second down, and making it easier on ourselves. Navarre gets the call from the sideline, signaled in. Perry has returned to the backfield. So it's a two-back setup. From two-back, they will frequently throw to Askew. He's a dandy receiver, lined up as the fullback. They'll run Perry behind him. Slips the first tackle, but Doss comes up hard. It was blown up by Kenny Peterson, and then Doss rolled up hard from his safety spot. Kenny Peterson had a brilliant game last week. Also, Matt Wilhelm in the backfield kind of making Perry stop his momentum forward and then cleaned up by a very quick running defensive line for Ohio State. That's how dominating they've been. Look at the we averages shoot. of those teams and what they've done against Ohio State. Now it is third down and long. Passing situation for Navarre. Beautiful strike for the first down at the 35-yard line. Their ace wide out, Braylon Edwards, for 15 yards. You must put pressure on John Navarre. Michigan goes with a three-person route. One, two, and three. That's it. Everybody else is back in the backfield helping. Look at that pocket. 
nobody to throw to. One guy goes deep, and there's Braylon Edwards. And when John Nabar is able to throw from the pitcher's rubber, that means if you don't move him around in the pocket, he has a very, very good and accurate arm. Now Perry back in behind Askew. Here comes Perry, stretch play to the right. Short of the 30-yard line as we check in on the priorities here, Gary. Offensive priorities for both teams. They're really the same in a football game like this. Both teams want to win first down. Three yards or more on first down. Really, the name of the game today is tackling. Yards after contact in the run game or yards after catch in the passing game. And really, no turnovers. You either score or you punt the ball. Score with field goals or punt the ball. Bellamy is out to the right of this formation. Here comes the end around. Bellamy bobbles it. And so Reynolds, the linebacker, able to fall on him. And Bellamy coming in the game on the end around. Yeah, had, Ohio State had the perfect defense on for this play. They had a corner blitz to the short side of the field. Michigan very fortunate on this handoff reverse to Bellamy that they got the ball back because Dustin Fox was right in the backfield to blow that play up before it got started. Third down and 11 for Cars Wolverines. Gamble is the field corner. Fox down to the short side. Navarro gets time, field side, the strike to Bellamy inside the 20 yard line. First down, Wolverines, 18 more yards for Navarre, who's driving Michigan. Michigan has been running this play since Jim Harbaugh was playing quarterback. One receiver will cross short, and the deep receiver will come across deep. Ohio State has seen this all week. Where is the coverage behind? Where are the linebackers? That's what Michigan likes to throw, that crossing route between the hashes. Edwards and Butler are the wideouts. Michigan continues to change its offensive personnel on this drive. Navarro is going to put it up on first down, go in zone, incomplete. Threw it out of the back. And that's that matchup, Brent, that Dustin Fox knew he would get last week. Walter Young from Illinois burned him. This time they put Braylon Edwards, Michigan's tallest receiver, on Dustin Fox, a shorter corner, but the ball was not thrown in the playing field. That ball must be thrown high into the outside and let Braylon Edwards go for a jump ball and get it at the highest point. David Thompson checks in for the Bucks, and you can see how they spread the wealth. The Wolverine receivers this year, tight ends, running backs, wide receivers. Now second down. And they come back with Perry. It is blown up, and there's that man again, number two, Michael Doss. You and on the bottom of that stack, his last game here in the shoe. And he's been so good against Michigan last year with the two interceptions. He is the guy when you run the ball to the tight end side, he gets in on the play. He's just going to be there. Very tough to block a safety, and Michael Doss has been doing it all year. See his numbers coming into this game. And a year ago against Michigan, two interceptions. Now third down. Navarre backs it off with the shotgun. Askew alongside. Navarre to the middle, deflected, incomplete. And it is fourth down. And here's one of those troublesome fourth downs during the pregame warm-ups. Finley, the punter, was able to kick field goals from this far out. But now we'll see how he handles it under game pressure. And Michigan has one of the lowest conversion rates in the Big Ten. And the reason is, is they got a low field goal conversion rate. They're 40% on the year. You almost have to call plays differently because of their lack of confidence in the field goal game. A 36-yard field goal for Finley. Michigan trying to get on the board first. Slips it through for the field goal with a band in the background. The Wolverines come to Columbus and strike first. Folks, in a big game, if it's low score, scoring first can be absolutely critical. Timeout. Well, before the game, Jim Trussell walked out of the locker room and looked up at the scoreboard, and the operator had been putting up bogus numbers, and Michigan was warming up, and he said, get that down, but not fast enough. The skilled players of the Wolverines caught an eye 
And as Jim said, I no reason to try and fire up the other team like that. He was pretty hot about it. Here comes Hall now for the Bucks. 15, 20. Down at the 24-yard line. Now you can see how they have gone into a tailspin, the Buckeyes, and that correlates to a lot of the playing time that Maurice Claret has missed. Lydell Ross back in as the tailback. Krenzel's going to throw on first down. It'll be Ross. And Jackson, number three, one of the best corners in the country, comes up, take him on at the 26-yard line. Nothing much doing on that play. Boy, Michigan is not missing any tackles in this football game. Ohio State is getting the minimum, but number 13 is coming into the game. Let's see if the tempo and the blocking all of a sudden improves for Ohio State. So Maurice Claret on the field for the first time in several weeks. One back. Prinzel will throw. Claret missed his block. It's off to Claret. They set the play beautifully. And he is run out of bounds for a first down. So Claret, for a moment, looked like he fanned on a block, but it was a planned play, and they threw to the youngster who sprinted upfield. And look what talent can do. After he catches the ball, goes great, and Claret's going to come into your picture right here, block the end man. Stevens kind of wings him. Perfect play for the screen. Gets loose, but I'll watch a great player make another great player miss a tackle. That's what talent does. All of a sudden, those three-yard plays become ten-yard plays. So it's a first and ten for the Wolverines. The ball at the 36-yard line. Krenzel back in the gun. They're going to stay airborne underneath. Jenkins on the flanker screen. Fumble! And I believe number 80, Ryan Hamby, the freshman from Cincinnati, pounced on the ball. Yes, he did. I think Cato June or Marlon Jackson, one of the two, ripped the ball loose. Ohio State has never shown this formation that I have seen. A wide receiver screen. Jenkins comes inside, catches the ball, and then watch. I think it's number three, Marlon Jackson, rips the ball loose, and Ohio State falls on the ball. But Ohio State has decided to loosen this game up with the passing game. Brandon Cho now is in at fullback. They're going to offer Claret a little lead blocking here. Show power formation with Hartsock, the tight end to the right. Two wide outs out to the left. Here comes number 13. The hole is there. Jackson steps up along with Drake, and Claret is bringing the crowd alive. And we go to New York at John Saunders. Michigan leading by a field goal, 3-0. Claret on the field for the first time in several weeks has now been taken out. Being tended to on the sideline. Ross, the tailback, number 30. And the whistle before the snap. So Jimmy LaPatina is our uh, veteran referee here today. Full start. Offense. Well, Five let's find out more about down. Claret's injury. Let's go to Jack Aroot. So, Jack, we're looking at a cutaway of the shoulder here that shows the nerves coming out of the neck and coming down the arm. And when Maurice Claret got hit on the shoulder, it stretched those nerves. Yes. And what, what now Maurice has to do is rest because these nerves don't rebound. Only rest will cure it. Yes, it takes time for the nerves to recover. Thanks, Chris. You bet. All right, Jack, thank you. And Claret's back on the field. Short rest that time. Prinzel stays airborne. Here's Gamble. Could not get to the first down marker. He was wrapped up by Jeremy Lasseur, the junior from Holly Springs, Mississippi. One of the underutilized weapons for Ohio State has been Chris Gamble on offense. Since he's moved over to the defensive side of the ball, people have not seen the type of receiver is, and he's a brilliant receiver. You see Lasseur give him plenty of room, and Gamble has yet to have one of those catches where he grabs the ball and shows that punt return, interception return ability at an offense. You'll get an idea about the Buckeyes' game plan right here. Second down and short. Claret to the middle, slashes free, 30, the difference maker, 20, 15. There it is. Look at the crowd, ladies and gentlemen. They know what a difference number 13 brings to this attack. That's a 29-yard burst now. 
for Maurice Corey. He's the wild card in this team. Spread him out. All of a sudden, that offensive line that couldn't open up anybody has a guy that picks the blocks. And oftentimes, it's the running back that gives that line the juice that you can run the ball. I thought Maurice Hall early just was picking the wrong hole. Now it's a first and ten at the Wolverine 11 for the Buckeyes. Back with the freshman. Not much doing on this carry. That was it, though. He got hit. So in the early going down here, and Maurice Claret is coming off the field. Running the ball to his right means the linebackers are on the inside and coming at that left shoulder. And he got stung. I don't know if it's his left shoulder or not, but I saw right away he got up Jimmy. So it is second down for the Buckeyes. Krenzel back in the shotgun. Ross back in at running back. Jenkins is to the short of the right side. Krenzel takes off. And the Wolverines are very aware of Krenzel's running ability, especially the last few weeks. And they crushed the Buckeye quarterback, and I do mean crushed, at the five-yard line. Yeah, no running over these linebackers at Michigan. Last week, he went over the top of a couple of linebackers in Illinois, but not Michigan's linebackers. Not in Michigan, Ohio State, you're not running over the top of linebackers. Third down. Four for the first down, five for the touchdown, two wide outs out to the left. Krenzel is back in the gun. Krenzel's woozy, Brent. And as a result, yes, I is. think time ran out after that hit. So trying to shake off the cobwebs, he Wait, cost them snap. five yards. Play a game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Okay, he's out Still on his feet down. right here. He took those three linebackers on head on. And he started walking to the bench before that play, and he really didn't have his senses about him. The backup quarterback, McMullen down here on the sideline. That's Scott McMullen. He's a junior out of Granville, Ohio. And uh, Krenzel. Staying on the field right now, but the ball has been backed up outside of the 10 yard line. Third down. Gamble comes in motion. He threw behind the receiver, but interference is called. Jenkins was running a slant. Lasseur with the cover, and the yellow comes flying. Boy, that, that ball was not catchable either. Lasseur is trying to play the receiver. The ball was. Clearly behind Jenkins and Lasore ran right up his back. Watch the ball go wide of Jenkins, man to man to the top. The ball was not going to be catchable to the outside, and he just rakes him across the head. Jeremy Lasore, a little bit of a panic on a play. He could have just stuck his hands up, and he would not have been caught. The ball is put down on the two-yard line. It'll be first and goal. Jack, what are you hearing about Maurice? Maurice Claret did get a little bit of a bump on that shoulder, but he has passed the, the strength test that the doctors administer, and he's headed back out to a tumultuous greeting from the crowd here. All right, Jack, here he comes. A first and goal. They're lining up behind the fullback. They'll show power with a pair of tight ends. Here comes Ohio State muscle. Correct for the touchdown. Can he get there? Yes. Jackson could not cut the freshman off. for the extra point. Mike Nugent makes it 7-3. Ohio State leads for the first time. Now watch Corrett. Four carries, 38 yards, one touchdown. 
for the Bucks to win. He has to stay on the field. Timeout. Welcome back, everybody, with Gary Daniels and I'm Brent Musburger. A very important quarter coming up, you would think, for the Michigan Wolverines here being on the road. They need to finish off a drive and keep it going. Yes, but both sides, Brent, have shown they can move the ball, and I think Michigan's very happy with Navarre's start. Last year at this time, he'd already thrown picks, turned the ball over. Now they say John Navarre has escaped one quarter and playing good football. Here's Perry, slashes across midfield, and Will Smith making the stop. Bellamy's down to his right. Here comes Edwards around. They fake it. Perry still got it. Gets away from Gamble, but Gamble did enough to trip him up, and Perry could not maintain his balance. And there is number seven, and so many of you know the story of how four weeks ago, or four games ago, he became a starting defensive back as well as a wide receiver. And his numbers, folks, compare quite well with Charles Woodson's the year he won the Heisman Trophy. Third down coming up now for Navarre and the Wolverines. Gamble goes to the field. Three wide now for Michigan. Navarre steps away from the heat, fires a strike, and it's a first down at the 37-yard line. A 15-yard pass to Bellamy. John Navarre's doing a great job of finding those linebackers and throwing the crossing routes. So our Aflac trivia question today, who is the last Michigan quarterback from the state of Ohio to beat Ohio State? we got sort of a reverse of it today, folks. We've got a Michigan quarterback huh. quarterbacking Ohio State. Let's reverse it and see if you can remember who that was. A late substitution for the Wolverines. They get 11 on the field now on first and 10 inside the 40. Here comes Perry Daylight attacking the corner on that side. And Fox, the last man there as they cross the 25. Michael Doss has to come over on still another stop after 12 yards. I'm surprised Michigan got away with that one. They had 10 men on the field, and they substituted a player that didn't know he was supposed to be in there. He never got to the huddle, and that really misaligned the Ohio State defense, and that's why that play gashed. Jim Tressel was irate on the sideline. Perry comes off to the sideline, the Michigan rushing game. Perry healthy last week again. Got a little bit beaten up, I believe it was in the Penn State game. He's making a huge difference here with the Wolverines. Out right now, so it's a one-back ask you play fake. They're going to throw from it. Navarre! Juggle! Incomplete. That was Edwards. Had a crack at it. Well, I thought Gamble was going to pick it off first. The two probably most highly skilled athletes on the field, one for Ohio State and one for Michigan, are matched up here. Gamble just playing on instincts. Outside technique, but watch him close when he sees the ball. The ball's a little behind. Thought he catches it, and then it just bounces on the ground. Great call by the back judge on that one. You can see it. Gamble almost gets it, and then it right between the legs. Now second down and ten. Perry back in at running back for the Wolverines. Perry, Wilhelm, and Reynolds make the stop. The ball is on the ground, but I believe it'll be whistled down right there. So let's go down to Jack and uh, Jack and Navarre. He would really like to uh, come in here and uh, win this one. And indeed, he changed his whole style. As Gary, you said, he lost some weight, 15 pounds worth. Why? To try and increase and make his footwork better this year. He's gone to what they call progressive footwork. You know what that is. That's where you let your feet help you make your reads down through the progression in terms of receivers. He looks a lot better than he did in the big house one year ago. Three wide now for the Wolverines. Navarro looks for 80. Got him. Dove for the first down mark, and the headlinesman right there gives it to him. All right, John, and here are the Wolverines trailing Ohio State. 7-3 have driven inside the 20 to the 15-yard line. Askew's offset to the left. They'll run Perry, and Buckeyes were ready. Matt 
Wilhelm is there again, number 35, the big middle linebacker in his last Michigan game. And uh, if we go back to the 90s, I mentioned those three times when the Bucks were unbeaten. You can see back at 93, it was a shutout. Then in 95, Bianca Batuka rolls for 313 yards. And then the crusher in 96, Brian Greasy to tie Street. Sean Spring slips, touchdown Michigan. Now second down. Matchup one on one on Dustin Fox up here. The bar. And it'll be an incomplete pass because of the heat from Will Smith. Will Smith was in on top of him, big number 93. He, and he had Bellamy. They were going to the fade against Dustin Fox. Terry Malone, offensive coordinator, watched that Illinois film. Man on man coverage to the outside, and Will Smith might have saved seven points on that one. This tough Buckeye defense. They now come with a nickel package. Five defensive backs. Third down. Wolverines have to get inside the five-yard line for a first down. Buckeyes show blitz, and here they come. The bar's going to throw it high and out of the end zone. It is now fourth down. Carr screaming that there was pushing down there in the end zone, there but might, no flags. Yeah, there might have been, but the ball wasn't close enough to really get the official to make the call. John Nabar must keep that ball catchable, otherwise those taller Michigan receivers can't make a play. Edwards against Dustin Fox. Watch this ball. Little jostle, little jostle, but wait, it lands three yards out of bounds. They're not going to get that call. So Finley, who has kicked one field goal here today, will attempt a 35-yarder. Made one from 36. He can make it a one-point football game. Perry is back on the field now, along with Askew. They've used single backs with the two. Well, actually, they've always had Askew with Perry, but they single back Askew as a formation. Chapru blocking well at the tight end spot. Now the play fake. Put it up on first down, and he's got Edwards again, and that's Gamble making a sharp tackle, looking like he's been a defensive back throughout his career on that play. Boy, is John Navarre on his game. He's not completing them all, but he's making all excellent decisions. The ball is being thrown crisply. He knows where he wants to go with the football. He has not made a mental mistake in this football game. You can tell the difference in a confident quarterback who has experience from the guy that might have played a year early last year when this team was expecting Drew Henson to be their quarterback. Second down. Here comes Perry. See Grant hanging on. But for the Wolverines, that's another first down. Now speaking of John Navarre, Gary, you were up and you asked him about this Ohio State defense. Here's what he said. They're very aggressive. Uh, but I think the, the, the thing, you know, that you, you see from all the tapes is that they're really fundamentally sound. And uh, they got guys in the right places. Uh, they know where their strengths are, and uh, that's where they attack you with. Right now, DeVar faces a first down against this stout D. Here comes Perry and C. Grant over there from his linebacker spot. Was a cornerback, of course. You know the story about number six. Put on some weight, bulked up a little bit. A more natural college linebacker than uh, being back in the defensive backfield. Coach Jimmy Tressel, like all good coaches who take over programs, who identify talent and where to put it. Put talent in the right place. Such a critical, critical part of good coaching. Ohio State's coming with their nickel package on second down, matching up the formation with three wide receivers for Michigan. Second down. Buck show that four-man front. Navarre fires, juggled in, hung on to by number 19, Bellamy. Fox, the defender, was on him. Boy, a good play calling by Michigan. They're running the ball forward. Their offensive line is handling that active front for Ohio State. And then remember a week ago when they watched the films of Ohio State versus Illinois, they ran slant and go. So what do you do? You know that those defensive backs have been coached. Don't get beat on the slant and go. So you throw the slant right in front of them. Excellent coaching by Michigan. Jermaine Gonzalez on the field as a wide receiver. Can Michigan finish a drive? 
draw with Askew. Reynolds, number 44, flashes over, and Wilhelm also there. Well, you, you almost, Prince, and I know this is not the way it's supposed to go, but you almost consider this drive finished right now if they don't turn it over. They've come out from their own eight-yard line. They're going to get a try for a field goal. What a brilliant drive. They have not punted in this first half. First down, first down. They have moved the ball. Second down for the bar. Askew, Donnie Nicky trying to hang on to the big burly running back. He's at the bottom of that pile. It's number 25 came up. Wilhelm was over there, 35 also. And that'll bring up third down. So it has been the rubber band defense that Ohio State has featured so far. They have bent, they have bent, they have bent, but they have not broken. And now it is third down. And believe me, the Buckeyes would love to see another field goal shot here. Third down now. This will be critical. It's from the 20-yard line. Navarre running away from it. Slips inside. And Navarre's inside the 10-yard line for a first down. John Navarre making like Craig Krenzel of the last few weeks. He scrambles on third down for 12 yards, and uh, Lloyd Carr indicating he wants a timeout over there. Well, time of possession sometimes can be very misleading, but Gary here, I think it is telling us a story so far. Absolutely. 15 play drive starting from their own eight, own eight yard line. What the longest of the year has been 16 plays all year. That's the previous Michigan drop for the field goal. They will tie that right here. This will be the 16th play on this drive, and the bar rolling in trouble gets a sack back at the 15-yard line. Timmy Anderson, the junior defensive tackle, was in on that play, number 54. Boy, you got to give it to this Ohio State defense. Watch the corners inside Fox and Gamble. They do their job. He wants to come back here. There's Dustin Fox. Here's Gamble. Nobody to throw the ball to. Way to go, defense. Michigan trails by a point. One timeout down here, and they face the second down. Thought on first down, Michigan got a little cute with the bootleg, but John Navarre needed to bail him out by throwing that ball away instead of losing yards. John's back in the shotgun. Askew's alongside of it. Chapu is the tight end to the right of the formation. Navarre fires, it out of the end zone. And a penalty flag is thrown on the far side. So there is a penalty on the play. Usually holding thrown right into the middle of that offensive line. Start. Oh, wow. Offense. You know, uh, Brent, when you watch John Navarro, he has great confidence in Braylon Edwards. Goes right at Chris Gamble with Braylon Edwards, even though he had Bellamy match up against Dustin Fox. There's number 80. Daddy a player in Ann Arbor, and here he is going right at Gamble. He sure does. Gamble, bad technique, but he's an athlete. You're not supposed to spin and do that. But what did coach tell us yesterday? We don't coach him. <laughs> we just let him do what he wants to do this game. He comes out. Edwards does against Gamble again for the right side of the formation. And the Bucks show the nickel blitz. The ball throws the jump ball. Two great athletes. And Edwards has got it for the touchdown as Gamble goes down on the play. Now we've got a penalty flag. Now, was there offensive pushing down there, yes, Gary? That's what he's going to call. Going to call Edwards was the push-off. He was working hard to get his flag out. He could not get his flag out. Got those cold fingers. That's why there was the delay. This one will be coming back. But that's how you need to throw that football. You need to keep it in the field. You've got a tall receiver. Now they're saying, go get it. Go get it, Braylon. And you can see he had his hands on his jerseys, throwed him down to the right side. Not going to get away with that one in this stadium. Got grabbed the back of his jerseys and flung him down. That is a good call by the official. Big time talent, those two guys, huh? <laughs> you bet. What was it, first and goal from the what, seven or eight yard line? Eight yard line, and now the ball's back on the 33. 
well, 34, excuse me. Wow. Michigan will try to set that match up again. 103 from the Buckeye 34 yard line. Navarre, middle, complete to the 25 yard line, and that will bring up third down right now. Edwards curling into the middle that time, and Edwards looks like all the world. He's a big time, another big time Michigan receiver. I can remember Marquise Walker in this game last year, the game he had. Carr still working on the officials, trying to get some flags thrown in favor of Michigan. Watch the draw here. Michigan has a timeout. The one thing they don't want to do is blow at least a field goal opportunity, you wouldn't think. Navarre middle, got it to the five-yard line. Chopper, boy, when you have those tight ends that go down the middle, John Navarre just bullets that ball, doesn't throw it up in the air. Bullets that ball to the tight end. Joppy clears Wilhelm in front of Doss. Two of the best defenders on his Ohio State defense. But John Navarre throws a strike. Now it's decision time. It is fourth down. Michigan will use its final timeout of the half to discuss whether or not they will kick the field goal. Well, uh, Gary Danielson, uh, for all the world, it looks like Lloyd and Michigan will try to... Uh, Score a touchdown here. Let's well, see what happens. Remember, comes Navarre, out is there. The, Navarre is the holder, so that's not that's a real true. good key. <laughs> I see Askew yeah, they, coming out. He's also on out. this field goal formation. Field goal. Yeah. And Navarre, the holder. Might fake it, but at least they're going to line up a field goal. Askew's over there on the wing as a blocker. Finley is two for two on the day. This to put Michigan ahead. And now. Whistle blown over here on the right side of the defense. You can see the official who is waving his arms to stop the play. 21 seconds left. Navarre will put it down. This will be a 22 yard attempt. And Finley puts Michigan ahead for the second time in this game. His field goal started the scoring. Then Ohio State went ahead of car, 7-3. Then he had a second field goal, but now the third impressive drive. However, they have not yet been able to reach the end zone. Now Lloyd uh, smiling as he continues his political work with the uh, zebras on the uh, on the far side. Team will spice, can will sugar. Absolutely. You know, you gotta do it all. Gotta right? do it. Gotta <laughs> do it. Well, I mean, uh, it's been a well officiated game. Lapatinas yes. crew, a veteran. Uh, Two big, two big penalties by Michigan. You know, they had the sack and two penalties, or, or they might have put a touchdown on the board there. Campbell now back in the game. Snicker to the 30-yard uh, line. Well, Lloyd Carr, a veteran, of course, of the Big Ten Wars, and uh, Jim Trussell with a lot of success at Youngstown Estate, 154 games. Lloyd has been a very good bowl coach, four of seven. Trussell and the Bucks lost a year ago down in Florida. Carr's record against uh, the Bucks five and two. Jimmy, of course, came away with a win, though, last year in his first game. And uh, against the Big Ten, Jim Trussell is 12 and three. So Carr, the veteran, longtime assistant. Started under Schimbeckler over there. He was a quarterback in his playing days back in college. And uh, the Buckeyes will be content to uh, run the clock out here on the first half. Lloyd Carr and the Michigan Wolverines take a two-point lead into the uh, locker room at intermission. 9-7. And down we go to Jack. Well, Coach, rate that first half. What do you think? Well, I think we did a great job offensively. Uh, when you don't have to punt. Against Boys, two, State. Yeah, two great sustained yeah, drives. I feel very good about that. I know this. It's a great football game. Hard fought just the way it ought to be. Michigan, Ohio State, fellas. Well, Coach, so many times you've found this Buckeye squad in this position behind before the start of the second half. What'd you tell them? Well, same thing. You know, you've got to make every play be a special play. When you're in the Ohio State-Michigan game, it's so crucial. 
The Big Ten is a battle every weekend, and most especially on the last Saturday. Thanks, Coach. And, Brent, I haven't seen Jim Trestle this animated coming out of halftime all season long. Uh, Jack, he was really uh, trying to fire the troops up here, Gary Danielson. And uh, so far, Michigan has totally dominated offensively on the clock. Well, that's because of third down, Brent. They've just been picking up third downs in this game. They've rushed just enough. John Navarre has been on target when he's had to throw on third down. And Ohio State, you know, that one time they had a drive going. They got it, what, third and inches? They decided to punt. Third and inches, Michigan made it. Third and inches, Ohio State didn't. Well, Michigan gets the first possession of the second half. So that's another advantage. Remember, they won the coin flip. So Nugent puts the ball on the tee. The main man is Lasseur, number 21. And we'll see what Nugent is able to do into a little bit of a, of a breeze here this afternoon with Michigan leading by two points. High and short and fielded at the 14 by Lasseur. Alley right side, and he's slammed down to the 27. Pacific Life game summary stats. And they will look this way. The number of snaps, 44 for Michigan to 17 for Ohio State. And there's what Gary told you about. We've highlighted it. Eight of 11, Michigan on third downs. The Bucks with only two. Florette has carried the ball only five times because he's been on the sideline. He's still on the sideline. As John Navarre comes out now, Michigan has not yet punted in this football game. Perry starts off the second half, and he makes his way to the 30-yard line. Now, as we look at the comparison of our two quarterbacks, Navarre's thrown 17 times, Gary, and Krenzel only seven. Yeah, John Navarre's played a good football game in this football game. There's no doubt about it, but Craig Krenzel just hasn't had the opportunities. You know, we saw Carl Diggs leave this game with a knee injury. Ohio State hasn't been able to take advantage of that depleted Michigan linebacker unit because they have not, excuse me, ankle injury by Carl Diggs because they haven't been on the field since then. Second down and seven. Jopru, the H-back, comes to the left side of the formation. And it is to Edwards with Wilhelm picking him up. That is short of the first down. It'll bring up a third down for the Wolverines. Number 80, he'll go out to the right side of the formation. Six catches for 60 yards here today on third down. A handoff. Askew rumbles to the 45-yard line, and Michigan picks up another first down. Ran, ran right through a C. Grant blitzing linebacker, number six. No one blocks him at all for Ohio State. Watch number six. He needs to come in tightly right here. Make sure it's not a draw. Make sure the quarterback passes that guy. That's a good defensive design and a bad defensive play by C. Grant on 30 short. Askew, lined up in front of Perry. Now shifts over a little bit to the left to lead Perry through the hole. Wilhelm, though, jumps the play. Donnie Nicky also joins the fray, and it's second down. That's the type of tackling Ohio State has to have on first down. They can't have those running backs from Michigan spinning out as Wilhelm's Matt, hurt. Matt, Matt, Matt Wilhelm That's goes out. Stinger. Wilhelm has. Uh, very healthy this year, a year ago, was Nick, and they'll come in with DeAndre, a freshman, true freshman, will take his place. Number five is the replacement for Wilhelm, DeAndrea. The one thing they have to worry about is anything complex for DeAndrea. He did not see a lot of different formations in high school. He's down, he's down! And you can hear the umpire bellowing out that he is down. That's Roger Haber. He's our umpire, Jim Lapatina's crew. They've done an excellent job here so far today. And you can see Michigan's game plan. Get it to third and medium. That's why they're 9 for 12 in the football game, because they've got it third and makeable. Instead of third and long, it's been third and makeable, and John Navarre has been finding those Michigan receivers in the zone. This is what Navarre said that they had to do today against this defense. Wilhelm back on the field, missed only one play. Navarre, pressure hit by Grant, and it's incomplete. And rolling in that time from his linebacker spot, there is number six, C. Grant. 
Very interesting to see Grant lined up on the wrong side of the formation. And then when he shifted over, I think that confused Michigan's pass protection. He came free. And, and who's that coming on, Brent? What's that, what does that guy do? <laughs> what does he do? What kind of formation is this for Michigan? And Carr is still politicking on that far side. Angry right now. And here's the first punt. As Gary was pointing out, we don't <laughs> recognize him without a holder. Of course, he's kicked the field goals. And Finley, a good punter, drives Campbell back to the seven yard line. He gambles on it and picks up a few yards. Steps out to the 16 yard line. And Ohio State's four first half possessions. Gary, I make it, what, about an hour on the clock? <laughs> yeah, when they last right. had the football, it was about an they hour. They have to ago. warm up again. And this is where they took a knee on the first, on the last, right at the last play. It was a one play there. So this will be the. Buckeyes are probably rusty as they come out here. First down. Here comes the young man. Correct to daylight. Pedro June can't bring him down. Stevens finally comes from behind. But it's out to the 31 yard line and the difference maker with a first down on another 15 yard run and Stevens jawing a little bit with the freshman. This is what Claret does that Ohio State's other backs don't do. They run the ball up the, up the middle, but he feels as it bounces outside and falls forward like a, a young TJ Duckett for Michigan State when he was a freshman. Maurice Claret is that big tailback that runs through that first defensive back tackle. Vance is out to the left, Claret slips the corner that time. And it is the second man, Joy Sorantos, the redshirt freshman from Portage, Michigan, who finally brings him down. Sorantos in there because of the Diggs injury now, and he'll have to dig in. Let's check in with Jack. Brett, there's no question that Maurice Claret's shoulder is bothering him, but as he said at the beginning of the week, this is Michigan, Ohio State. He said, I'm not gonna run favoring or trying to protect that shoulder the way I have in previous appearances since he injured it. He said, if I play six plays or 60 plays, it's Michigan, Ohio State. I've noticed that he has been trying to bowl people over the way he did when he had that record day against Washington State. Michigan expected the pass and they get it. Nickelback went in under fire that time and trying to force the ball to Jenkins basically. You're not going to throw the ball late to Marlon Jackson's man. Even if it's Jenkins, you throw the ball as an afterthought against Marlon Jenkins, and he'll eat you up. You see Jenkins outside. Jackson's got him one-on-one -on -one. now. He throws it a little late. Jackson said, uh-uh, not against me. You can throw late against somebody else, but even if you're going to Jenkins, I'm going to be right there. Now Hartsock is split way out to the left in both, this Buckeye formation. Both formate. tight ends. Both tight ends are wide. Both receivers are in the slot. On this third down, Vance and Jenkins are the slot men. Prinzo will not get away from the pressure. Grant Bowman, who on the previous play brought the heat, got in again and set it up for Shanti Orr. Shanti Orr. And Bowman both. I think it was Orr first, then Bowman, then Orr, then Bowman. He has no one downfield to throw to, and the two outside guys just forced Krenzel to eat the ball in the pocket. Two consecutive plays for Grant Bowman. And Groom to punt again with Julius Curry, who returned today from the uh, injured list, set to return. from the 25-yard line, 40, 45, and down. Nine, seven, and a first down now for John DeVar. Here comes Perry, gets to the outside, and he will be out of bounds across midfield at the 47-yard line. They will spot the ball right there. So an overcast, cool day, and typical game that Woody and uh, Bo would have loved. It, it is the Wolverines offensive line that has uh, dominated the clock. Moving the ball here again, you can see the, the yards for Perry and Bo. Yeah, but if you had Askew in there too, has another 36. Michigan has rushed the ball for over 100 yards. The first time in five games that Ohio State has given up 100 yards rushing. This is Askew. Slashes. Diving for the first down. Michael Doss coming up from that 
safety spot to make another stop. We check in with Jack. Red BJ asked you, says that last season he was too selfish for the team, but when Chris Perry came on the scene, he had to decide whether he wanted to switch to fullback so that Perry could play or whether he wanted to stay competing with Perry for the tailback position. He switched over to fullback after addressing the team and saying, look, I will do whatever it takes to win. If Coach Carr wants me to field punts, hold for point afters, I'll do it. And he made the switch to fullback. On a first down for Michigan at Navarre. This movement, that'll cost them five. Well, I can imagine that there's a whole lot of folks around the country that are pulling hard for these Wolverines to hang on. And uh, Prior to the snap, false start, offense. They never penalty. went to school, but Go you can see time. what would happen. Uh, chaos would break out at the Tostitos BCS standings if the Buckeyes lose. Uh, could Washington State reach the Fiesta Bowl? How about Oklahoma? They'll feel they'll still have a chance. And Georgia, Notre Dame, and Iowa are very much in the mix and rounding out the top 15. Four teams in the Big Ten. So a lot of fortunes are depending on the outcome of this football game right now. John Navarre with a play fake to Perry. Stands tall in the pocket. And he missed Bellamy. Yeah, but the ball was thrown in a proper spot. A.J. Hawk was running underneath that curl route that time. And if Navarre would have thrown the ball to the receiver, he would have got it picked off. That's one of those decisions that a quarterback makes correctly with an incomplete pass. Navarre, 11 for 20 in the game. And Brent, no turnovers in this football game. Neither side has made that critical mistake yet. Second down and 15 with Burrett watching from the Buckeye sideline. Three down linemen as the Bucks expect the obvious pass and they'll get it. One to set the screen and he does to Askew. And it is blown up by young Mr. Hawk. Ladies and gentlemen, keep an eye on this man right here, number 47. He is only a freshman. He came here with an understanding of how to play the position. The coaches say it's the Ohio State sideline, and they're extremely fond of him and the job that he has done. Mark Snyder, the linebacking coach, said that he is further along than any of the freshmen. Now good, third down. Ohio State loves this three-man look on third and long with Will Smith right here as a wild card rusher or dropper. Navarre inside shuttle pass against the three-man rush. Short of the 40-yard line, and it'll bring up a fourth down. Ohio State stayed in a deep zone and made sure that ball was kept in front of them. That's good defense. It's going to force Michigan to punt the ball. See, BJ catches a lot of screens coming out of the backfield. Brent said he comes out in the two-man backfield to run routes. In the one-man backfield, he runs the screen pass like he did on second down. Campbell is back. Buckeyes looking for a spark as Finley hunting for the second time this half. And Campbell, they let this one roll to the end zone. Will it be down? Beanbag is dropped, but it went on into the end zone. Ohio State 0 for 3 in third downs. But that man right there has gained 54 yards and only seven carries. So the Buckeyes probably have to change the sequencing of plays as they start off with Claret who twists and then slips at the 26-yard line. So it'll be second down and about four coming up now for the Bucks. Ran right through Sorrentos that time as Claret breaks the record, huh? And here he comes, bounces the play to the outside beautifully to the 40, down at the 43-yard line. McClintock and June in pursuit, but 17 more yards. and. Uh, Gary, the running game, if you want to second guess Russell and the Buckeye Brain Trust, the running game looks solid, and it is the passing game that has struggled here mightily against Bishop. Well, I guess they just haven't, they're six for eight throwing the ball. They just have not been able to keep Claret on the field enough and make short conversions for first downs. When he's out there, he's able to run the ball. Four down linemen for the Wolverines. Lazarus is over on Stepanovich, and he moved. 
Lazarus has jumped on him now, and the officials, Lazarus is uh, motioning that he was pulled into that neutral zone, and the uh, umpire and the line judge there will sort it out. Right to the snap. Offside. Keep that. All right, John, and of course, next week here on ABC in prime time, Pete Jackson and Dan Fouts will have the Fighting Irish in Southern Cal out west. Huge game. There's Maurice Hall to the middle. Penalty flag is thrown. Penalty flag is thrown back at the line of scrimmage. This one could be coming back. Well, they finally pop one inside, and all of a sudden the Buckeyes get their holding penalty. Michigan had one earlier. So both teams on a big play have been called. Maurice Hall thought he finally had did one. Pulling around, gonna have the guard pull around right here. It's the power O, they've been running it all year. And I think it was a leave at number 71 as he spun his man around that got the call. Grant Bowman replaces Hoyer in the defensive front for the Wolverines. Claret back in as the running back. Good substitution pattern, I think, for Jim Trestle with Claret. He cannot be in game shape, not only uh, favoring that shoulder, but his getting hit. He can't be running back ready, and that's when you turn the ball over when you get tired. Joe is the fullback to the left of Krenzel. Krenzel wanted Claret on a shuttle pass. The play had been taken away from him, so Krenzel steps out of bounds, and will there be a late flag? There is one on the other side of this play. There is a penalty flag, but it has nothing to do with Krenzel on the far side, I don't believe. Now watch Krenzel. Going wide on the play. Got to hit right on the sideline. I think that's a good no call right there, but Krenzel did a smart thing in not pitching that ball. That was a shuffle pass underneath. And it was well defended. There was no way that they could have made that hold up. And if they had, it would have been for a loss. On the defense, the penalties will be declined. Result of the play ends up second down. So they will take the run by Krenzel. And a reminder, the conclusion of the game will select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And uh, that 12-yard gain goes down now for Krenzel, who is Gary points right at his forehead as he looks at Smart him. player. Absolutely, Gary. So we've said that now for just as long as we've watched him this year. You know, you've pointed it out several times. Colette maintains his balance, crosses the 40-yard line. And, Gary, I, I honestly go back to what I said. It looks like they can block for the run. And yeah. that's where they're gaining their yards against the Wolverines. I think Trestle just fears if they keep him in and pound on Claret play after play, he'll throw, you know, he's just not in hitting shape. He hasn't played in a while, and that's why he's spotting them. The Krenzel, I mean, six for eight, throwing the ball, running the ball when he has to. He's making the plays as a quarterback in this offense. Jenkins and Gamble are his two wideouts, two tight ends in this formation. Here comes number 13, bounces it around Hobson. But he could not stretch out the defense as Charles Drake, the senior from Los Angeles, at safety makes the stop. Second down. Now it's Claret. No hole as Hobson wraps Claret up at the 42-yard line. And the uh, freshman takes a loss on that play. Third down. Jackson will go with Jenkins. He has manned him up all day. Number three defensively, tracking number 12 offensively. Here's your third down. Tight now. end and fullback outside wide here. With an empty backfield, there's five receivers for Krenzel. Steps away from trouble. Now he'll run, dive to the close to that marker. He probably is just right at the marker. How they lucky to get that play off? Krenzel looked up and saw the shot, the clock going down, and quickly moved his foot to get the silent snap, and then dove for the marker on the far side. It's short, doesn't it? 
You can tell by the body language of Ohio State's bench that it was short. With Krenzel, you would think they just let him go right behind the left guard. Doss is out on the field yelling encouragement to the offense. Remember against Purdue, third down and short twice. They got stopped in the backfield, forcing them to try that fourth down pass play that won it. But they did not have Maurice Claret. Less than uh, you yard. wonder if they will I risk yes. a handoff I there think they when should you've got sneak. Absolutely, I would quarterback sneak. You can see how short this is. Goal line look here for the Wolverines. Florette there. Frenzel behind the left side. Got the first down. Sets it up and he come back very smartly and just go through. Florent decoys from the tailback position and he pushes through for the first down. Now the rest you can almost feel it. I, I don't I don't think the players are anywhere near as nervous as the Ohio State fans right now. Ball at the Wolverine 32. Takes the handoff, Prenzel's gonna throw a first down. Got a man wide open, it's Claret. Out of bounds at the six yard line. Maurice Claret, who is an outstanding pass receiver. That is for 25 yards during the spring. Jim Trussell told us that Michael Doss could not defend him coming out of the backfield. That's how good he is. Out and up, and watch Prenzel. He doesn't lead him, he's got him wide open, so he throws the ball right at him. And Claret turns around and catches it with two hands right there looking at the ball. Perfect by the quarterback. Great call by Jim Tressel on first down. A 26-yard gain. Buckeyes show the power eye. Michigan digs in for a play defensively. Claret bounces. Stopped at about the four-yard line. An injured Michigan player is down. I think he was perhaps just winded. Hoyer slow to get up. Norman Hoyer, the junior, he's up now, bending over a little bit. Take a look at uh, the two running backs. Claret now with 117 yards, averaging almost seven yards a pop. He has scored the games only Touchdown! You can see that Perry, although he has run well, has been limited to only 2.7 yards a carry. And uh, the Buckeyes, with Claret over on the sidelines, been taken out. He wants to be in he there, to he? In, <laughs> in he wanted to be in there. Now, in this situation before against Illinois, they ran the stretch play to Maurice Hall. Is Hall in the game, or is it Lydell Ross? It is Maurice Hall. down at the Wolverine four. Powers to the left side of the formation, but now the H back, yes, they'll turn it. Hartsock back around, and they'll go to the weak side. Easy, they're walking, touchdown. They ran away from the strength of the formation that time, and Maurice Hall strolls into the end zone. Now we know why Claret wasn't in there. This play has been practiced and circled for Maurice Hall. How about those two calls by Jim Tressel? The first down pass to Claret and the option play. Everybody to one side, option play to the other. Michigan never, never saw this one on film. Two great calls. So Jim Tressel orchestrating the offense. Using different personnel, Nugent adds the extra point. He scored the winner a week ago in overtime. Tressa leads Michigan 14 9. Timeout. Eight plays, 57 yards. Remember what we said at the start of the drive. The best starting field position of the day 
for Ohio State. We also said the wind is at their back. They have a chance if they can force Michigan to punt. And now, ladies and gentlemen, these Ohio State Buckeyes are five minutes from Arizona. Five minutes to a chance to play for a national championship. Perhaps their first since 68. But remember, the Wolverines got one in 97, and they've still got a lot of fire left in their belly. And it'll be their turn now with Nugent to kick it off. Let's go back to the TD, Gary. Overloaded on this side by Ohio State, and watch Cato June. He sees it, starts to smell, and cheats to the other side. Oops, option the other way. Cato June is out of position. He's the last guy that had a chance to make the play. A brilliant call for that touchdown. A field goal will not help Michigan. Wolverines must dig in now and score their first touchdown of the day. There's their possessions. They've been forced to punt four times. The yards, they haven't even gained 30 yards in the series against the Buckeye defense. Number 16, John Navarre, definitely under the gun right now. Short drop. Incomplete as his receiver went down. Bellamy coming off the line, and it is second and 10. And things are starting to turn now in Ohio State's direction. Yeah, how about that? No punts in the first half and four straight punts in the second half for this Michigan team. That time Bellamy got off the jam from Gamble and lost his footing on a play that should have been easy pitch and catch. The matchup is on the other side of the field ball. Edwards and Fox, that's where you want to go, down here. Here comes Perry. They don't give up on the run, but it'll be third down and long. Complete and Fox was riding the receiver and there's a penalty flag thrown by the linesman as Fox was all over the intended receiver. Came right over his back. Ohio State went, went with about a three and a half man rush. Three up front and Will Smith came in real late and that's just too much time for Navarre. There's the matchup, Bellamy, they're gonna throw at Fox when they want to, Fox must make a play. Pretty good position this time. The ball slightly underthrown, and he goes through the back. Here he is down here. The ball comes right in that area. Look at this. Three-man rush. Ball is thrown in the dig. And, man, that was very, very close. I actually thought Fox made a pretty good play on that one, but his fate, he came through with his shoulders and hit Bellamy on an underthrown ball. Ball is brought out to the 38-yard line. First down after the 15-yard penalty. Navarre to throw on first down, incomplete. Edwards can't hang on. People at Michigan have felt that Edwards, on the easy throws, takes his eye off fit and starts to run. That play, he could have at least caught the ball and made it a two or three yard gain, maybe four yard play. He ended up trying to run too quickly and he drops the ball. Well, the young man who is uh, under fire again, number 37. There is Fox on the corner. Next year, you can expect him to be switched to safety. He'll move into the DOS spot in all likelihood. Navarre goes back again, fires, and receiver was down on the catch. Could not get up and uh, go as his knees were on the ground. Bellamy at the 44-yard line, and it'll be third down coming up. Now Gamble, who has been the two-way man, switching over to the field or wide side of the formation. 64 snaps. He's been in on every defensive play. Return punts. Now facing the third down.
Short drop, firing, deflection, incomplete. It's fourth down, hold it. There's a penalty flag. It's going to be a tip ball, though, Brandon. They're going to pick the flag up. The ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage, and they will pick it up. That's exactly what they're signaling. Trestle first, Lafatina next. And 105 other thousand people. <laughs> <laughs> There's no foul in the play. The forward pass was tipped by a defensive lineman. No foul. Slant play. Ball up front is tipped, Jazz. Very clearly the ball is slipped, and that's exactly when it ball, when Dustin Fox grabs hold of the receiver, clearly after the tip pass. Fourth down for Michigan. Cars team to go for it. Navarre looking to the sideline for the signal. Fourth down against the Bucks coming up. Wolverines need four. They've got it. Out of bounds at the 44-yard line. John Navar keeps the drive alive with another third down strike. This one of 12 yards. What a throw. Come on. You, this is unbelievable. John Navarre criticized so much in his career, goes up against Gamble. Perfect throw, outside shoulder on fourth and four. Navarre to put it up on first down. Goes down to Bellamy high, and it'll be second down. So Bellamy, who made that catch to keep this drive alive, and it is second down, and we were just talking about how much they've been attacking Fox, and that time they went after Gamble and uh, picked up the first down. Fourth the down. one thing that coaches tell you about defensive backs, I know it's a cliche, but uh, they've used it here at Columbus. We'll pass it along. If you play the corner, you must have a very short memory. And uh, Mr. Fox did just that. They took him out of the Illinois game, sent him back. He's played hard and well here today. Now it is second down and 10. Wolverines with three wide receivers. They run the draw play. Askew across the 40 to the 38-yard line. 14-9, but the Wolverines are alive. Edwards is the motion receiver. Navarre getting great time, hits Edwards again. And he's wrestled down at the 30-yard line with 2.29 to go. Matt Wilhelm brings him down. It's Ohio State defense, you called it the rubber band defense all day. That's what it's been. This drive is starting to feel a lot like that Illinois drive at the end of the game when they marched it down there. Took it into overtime. Now, here's this Ohio State defense facing a precision pass in Michigan team that has four downs. Ask you the running back. Navarre getting great time. Fumble! Ball's picked up finally by the Buckeyes. Finally, the ball was rolling around. La Fatina's there. First down. Buckeyes. The Buckeyes on the game's first turnover recover the Navarre fumble and coming out of there with the football is Will Smith. But see, Grant was in there. They were all in the middle of that pile. We'll take a second look at it. Ohio State lined up funny. I don't think they even had a, a cornerback covering a wide receiver, but they got away with it. Michael Doss was supposed to go one way. Navarre comes up in the pocket. Ball gets popped loose inside. I don't know if it was David Thompson that knocked it loose or Darian Scott. Darian Scott knocked Darian it free. Yes. And Will Smith, watch now from the left side. Darian Scott will flash with the left hand, pumps it out. Now the ball is still free. No one yet has it. And finally, Will Smith has it. And now the Buckeyes are two minutes from Arizona. Michigan only has one timeout left. They took one on fourth down, and they used one earlier in the game. On that play, though, you can see that Ohio State is confused. Here's Doss going out for a wide receiver. They don't really uh, found a line very smartly. Doss runs out there as a veteran guy, and inside comes Darian Scott because a misalignment by Ohio State works out to their benefit. Amazing. 
first turnover of the football game. Ohio State's defense must prepare themselves. The game is not over. They could have to go back out of the field one more time. Jim Tressel's telling his guys, no penalties, ball security. The worst thing we can do now is turn the ball over or get a big penalty. If we have to punt, we're at least going to be able to bleed the clock. The other thing he's telling Brent is don't run out of bounds. Here comes Claret. Stopped after a yard or two. Lazarus, who's played well as a defensive tackle. That's all their timeouts. So Ohio State will be able to run a play and take another about 40 seconds off of the clock here when they have to play if they have to punt the ball. So Maurice Claret with 117 yards today, 19 carries. And so, so he turned out to be the wild card, huh? He had to come through in this football game. He was itching to go last week, but Tressel rolled the dice and waited for today against Michigan, and it paid off so far. Think they got those TV sets up to 80% today. <laughs> So many frustrating moments for Ohio State football teams in the hands of Michigan. You can, the city was uh, was so uneasy and anxious and nervous. And the coaches, and the players, really weren't when we came in here. It has been the fans, and uh, they're not going to breathe easy until the next two minutes run off the clock. Claret ducking and diving, but not many, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Is Scott McClinic. Stops in there, steps in there, and uh, Michigan certainly not giving up. Well, today's Chevrolet players of the game. How about Michael Doss? How about the game he played today for Ohio State? Braylon Edwards, the wide receiver, nine catches, 96 yards, and uh, he looks like he's going to have a, a great career up at Ann Arbor, but it was Michael Doss, Donnie Nicky. Doss today with 13 tackles, and almost, almost jarred the ball loose for a fumble a short time ago. They ruled it an incomplete pass. He's just a terrific leader there. You saw Nicky back there, number 25. You, you cannot say enough about these two leaders down the middle for Ohio State. So Michigan going to get the ball back with about a minute to go in the game. Both teams have used all of their timeouts. So even if Ohio State, as they burn one here to run the clock all the way, needed in the last minute to, burn, to take some time, they could not even rest with the timeout. Let's go down below the chat. One of the changes between this Ohio State squad and coaching staff and the one that preceded them was the embracing of this Ohio State-Michigan rivalry. As soon as Jim Tressel arrived here, he didn't treat it like any other game. He said this is the most important game each and every year. And he has done that. He shut down access to the players this week, not because he was concerned, but because that's what goes with the rivalry, Brent, as you know. When we walked into the lockers, it was talking, it was up on the walls everywhere. Give 110%, leave it all out on the field. Jim Tressel has embraced the history of this 99-year rivalry and has used it to motivate his players. You know, uh, Gary, I was looking at uh, Jack down there, and I happened to know on good authority that that hat is, was given to him by a Montana Wrangler by the name of Will Smith. <laughs> Ohio State has only had one punt partially blocked all year, and that was against Minnesota. Fourth down, and here comes the punt. Michigan coming after it, but Groom slams it out of there. Curry on the one hop. Gamble can't bring him down. Reynolds is right there, and he's out of bounds at about the 20-yard line. So it's about 80 yards, 58 seconds coming up here for the Wolverines and the way they can stop the clock of course in the NCAA football is with the first down it's a long long way to the end zone for Michigan and those long-suffering Ohio fans who've 
lived with the drive from John Elway for the Cleveland Browns and the fumble and Michael Jordan's shot in basketball and since 1968 here in football are not resting and relaxing. There's still 58 seconds to go in this game. Navarre. Incomplete. Well, ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. The keyword is ABC Sports. Get all the scores if you check in with ESPN.com. You know, in the old days, we used to say that none of the networks gave us enough scores. And now, if you got a computer, never miss a score. Here comes Navarre, down, firing, incomplete. In and out of Edwards' hands, Wilhelm had dropped back in that zone coverage to help out the DBs that time. Ohio State, in both plays here, are playing the same prevent coverage. Michael Doss is sitting in the middle of the zone, about 18 or 20 yards deep. Everyone's forcing the ball to the inside. There's number two. He's going to read the quarterback's eyes and stay right on the inside for all the crossing routes. He's the wild card. The clock cannot move fast enough for Jim Trussell and the Buckeyes. Incomplete. And Will Allen, the nickel man, number 26, comes up now under 42 ticks and one play left for Michigan to keep this going. Fourth down and 10. Perfect time for the prevent defense. You've got your best player in the middle reading the quarterback's eyes and everybody forcing their man towards number two. The Big Ten Conference is 42 seconds away from putting its first team ever in a BCS championship game. We are five years into that deal, and this would be the first appearance for the Big Ten. Navarre fires, and Wilhelm rides the receiver down, but they'll stop the clock with 35 seconds. And again, John Navarre, that time on fourth down, picking it up. They are 12 of 21, Michigan is, on third down here today. And now they pick up a first down on a fourth down. Navarre has been getting tremendous protection, too, against this three-man rush. On the move, fires back across the green, and Doss had coverage that time. No chance for a completion. That's the defense. Force them inside. You can see that this Ohio State defense is going to force everybody. There's a corner. There's a cornerback. They're both faced in. They're saying, you're not getting outside me. We're going to force in to number two. He's the robber inside, and he's the guy that makes the play and really inter interferes on the play on that one. Second down and 10. Navarre steps up, fires, complete again. This time to Bellamy to the 46, still alive. 20 seconds left after the 15-yard gain. And to Jim Trussell, it must seem like time is standing still as the clock is stopped by uh, spiking the ball. But Trussell must be over there saying, How, where, where's the Michigan State <laughs> timer when I need it? Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> What's going to happen now is Michigan, no matter what, at the end of the game is going to be able to throw a long one into the end zone for the last play of the game. So this will come down unless they turn the ball over to one long pass into the end zone. <laughs> the Wolverines at the uh, 45. Navarre. And that time Campbell broke it up, but he interfered. So it'll be 15 more yards, and the Wolverines are edging closer and closer. Ohio State he needs to be patient. Michigan is being patient with this drive. Ohio State is not. Campbell, watch this. This is an easy play, but he puts his arm in the back of the receiver. An easy call, pass interference. Doss got away with one early, but you're not going to get away with two. 14 seconds to go. Ball at the Buckeye, 41 yard line. <laughs> and this pass. Has to keep Lloyd off the field. Yeah. 
The protective pocket fires, diving catch. They're inside the 25-yard line with another Bellamy reception. And now nine seconds on the clock after that 18-yard gain. And here come the Wolverines again. They'll spike it. Which they do, Gary. Seven seconds left on the clock. And for Ohio State, their fans, seven very anxious seconds, huh, folks? And for Michigan, nothing, nothing would make them any happier than to deliver the dagger with seven seconds to go. And you can see Ohio State cannot take a timeout. They would like to reorganize here, but they used their timeout on that last punt. They're sucking wind right now, and they just have to go with it. Michigan must throw at least for a first down or the end zone. Navarre hit on the release, does get it. It's out of the end zone. He was hit by Kenny Peterson. Kenny Peterson has played a tremendous game. One second, one second left on the clock. And remember, it is not a home timekeeper anymore. That was a change this year. It's an independent play. They are running the clock. The ball sails out, and the independent clock operator says one more snap. So close, and yet so far. The ball will be in Navarre's hands one last time. Fires in zone, intercepted. Let's party, Columbus. Their 29th Big Ten Championship, and it is huge as Maurice Claret, Jim Trussell, and the Buckeyes were ahead to Arizona where they'll play for all the Tostitos in the Fiesta Bowl on January 3rd. For the first time in history, 13-0, the Buckeyes. I guess that's the pre-bet defense to the limit right there, huh? <laughs> oh, my. And that is the epitome of bend and don't break. Let's go to Jack Aru. Coach! Okay, Jack. Okay. You're headed to the national championship. Congratulations. Well, I don't know if that's for sure, but I'm sure proud that Ohio State won in the big rivalry. And I tell you what, we're so proud of our kids. They play like crazy. That's the Ohio State-Michigan game, 60 minutes. But, Coach, 13 games ago, you gritted for the long haul. All of the planning that you and your staff made comes to its fruition today. I tell you what, it's awful special, and we got great kids, we got great coaches. How about these fans? And what about the play of Maurice Claret? I tell you, he's a tough kid, and we talked early in the week. He was going to play, there's no doubt. Well, congratulations to you and the team. I know you've got to go pay tribute to the band That's right. and the alumni now. Thanks, Jack. A terrific coaching job. But Michigan. Michigan showed absolutely no quit in this football game. They Allen. brought it down, right down to the final tick of the clock, Gary. And the young defensive back who kept the man in front of him, got the interception, no interference, played it cleanly, and then went down and said, we're the winners. So hail to the uh, Buckeyes.